everybody. Welcome back to the podcast daily for Wednesday. This is Bill Landis uh, breaking up a little bit of our spring practice previews with some NFL draft talk. And to do that, we have on the guy who I think is the best in the business when it comes to analyzing the NFL draft. That is Dane Brugler of The Athletic. Dane was uh, nice enough to give us some time out of his incredibly busy schedule uh, this time of year uh, to talk about some of the Buckeyes in the 2023 NFL draft. So we appreciate it, Dane. Um, how how crazy are things for you at the moment? You know, it's the lead up to the combine is always busy because you you want to you have so much work to do trying to make sure that you've seen all these guys. You have a good idea of, uh, you know, just what to expect for them at the combine. You know what their tape says. Uh, so, you know, you're ready to react to all the numbers that come in, um, that type of thing. So it's, uh, you know, you're, you're just trying to f- uh, figure out this class. And there's a lot of a lot of players, a lot of good players. And, you know, Ohio State's well represented like they are every year. Uh, the Big Ten's pretty well represented. Um, so a lot, a lot of good players that will make up the first round. So we're going to hit on a couple of different Buckeyes in this draft. But uh, since we are kind of just on the cusp of the NFL Combine, um, who in this group of Ohio State players or maybe are you most intrigued by heading into that event or, or who do you think has the chance to perhaps help himself the most in Indianapolis? We got to start with Zach Harrison, right? I, yeah, I mean, that's what I figured. Just, yeah. <laughs> the the freak uh, that Zach Harrison is, um, you know, and we didn't get to see him at the senior bowl. He, he pulled out. Um, and so I know there, there, there were some lingering injury stuff that, uh, was part of the reason. And, you know, he's working through that. Hopefully he's full go at the combine, um, just so he can put on a show uh, and, and show what he's capable of. You know, this is a guy that is going to be six, six, 265 pounds. And, and the over under on his 40 yard dash is, is what four, five, two. I, I mean, yeah. it's going to be unbelievable to see what he does how how long he is um but it'll be interesting to see if he does the three cone and the short shuttle and some of the uh non-linear drills that kind of show the change of direction and and that's where we you know we, the questions are with Harrison as a football player is we know that we has has the speed has the length um you know it, it's just some of the change of direction stuff some of the the short area agility drills how does he look in those? Does he even do those drills at the combine? Um, so that'll be important um, uh, to see. Uh, I mean, but the, the length is really what's going to stand out with him. Um, you know, Dewan Jones was a story of the senior bowl with how big he was. Um, but getting exact measurements on Harrison will be uh, really good to see. I talking to scouts, they yeah, that have been to Columbus. They said that his lengths, arm lengths about 35 and three quarters. I, that's that's uh, you know an unreal arm length for a defensive end and watching him on tape if his arm is you know a half inch shorter he's not forcing some of those fumbles or making some of those plays and so that length really does show up on tape it's not just a, a number that looks pretty on paper um so Zach Harrison definitely won uh, obviously CJ Stroud just to see how he throws the football mm-hmm. um and an interesting thing with CJ Stroud is you know they do these all the drills uh positional drills and, and uh, uh testing drills in alphabetical order who does uh stroud follow in alphabetical order among the quarterbacks in indianapolis anthony richardson, anthony richardson yeah anthony richardson has <laughs> the a, a rocket launcher on his arm uh, on his shoulder um the, the most effortless velocity um you're gonna see so that power arm is really going to wow people. And this is assuming both are throwing. Hopefully both do throw. Um, it, it's something that you won't soon forget. But with Stroud throwing right after him, you know, obviously Stroud doesn't have the same type of arm strength. I don't think it's – I don't think he has below average arm strength. Um, but just seeing it, it, is there a real difference between seeing the two, uh, the way the ball comes off the hand, uh, the zip, everything. And then with C.J. Stroud – Obviously, the reason we're talking about him as a potential top five pick is how accurate he is from the pocket. So I think it will be important for him to show that uh, the pacing, the ball placement, um, just to show how accurate he can be and kind of remind people that I might not be elite with some of these physical traits like Anthony Richardson is. But I this is what I can do with my accuracy. And that's why I I belong uh, in, in that top five conversation. So I, I know you've I've I listened to your podcast that you do with with Andy Staples on the Athletic quite a few times, and I know you guys have talked about this. But um, how how much does one game change the the, the book on C.J. Stroud, if, if if at all? He, he was creative in a way that we had not seen prior to that in, in the Peach Bowl against Georgia, and I know that that is probably a knock on him as he goes through this process. Did he change any minds with that? Is 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 one game sample size not enough, or, or how does that impact things? 
it, it's fascinating because scouts are our body of work type of people. You know, they do not live week to week or tape to tape. But if you see, I've also been taught, if you've seen a, a player do something once, you know they can do it. Mm-hmm. And with CJ Stroud, you know, I, obviously having – you know, almost a month to prepare and just, you know, getting his mind right for uh, being able to do that. You know, that that's that's part of the equation. Um, but he at least has shown he can do it. And I don't think anybody ever thought CJ Stroud was a bad athlete. It was more of just a comfort level thing. You know, did he feel comfortable using his legs um, both in the pocket and then when he got on the outside and there was green grass in front of him? So uh, it's obviously playing his best game in the final game against that defense on that stage uh, is only going to help him. And and now it comes down, it's up to scouts to figure out, okay, is this the new CJ Stroud we're getting uh, moving forward? Or, you know, is he strictly going to be a pocket passer? Like we, we saw for the first, you know, 27 uh, starts in his Ohio state career where uh, you know, he, he had his first 27 starts at Ohio state. He had one, one forced missed tackle against Georgia three, I mean, how do you how do you reconcile that? And so uh, it's something that I think will be different from team to team, scout to scout, evaluator to evaluator. But I think bottom line, the reason you're drafting CJ Stroud is his accuracy from the pocket, the way he can carve you up, um, his anticipation, his the way he can read pre and post snap. Um, but you know, and I, I don't think we'll see him test uh, at the combine, um, you know, just because we see so few quarterbacks. Uh, do uh, to uh, you know Justin Fields did but that was at the pro day uh, and he was just kind of flexing with that 40 yard dash I don't know if CJ Stroud will work out um, and run the 40 and do all these drills it'd be nice it'd be great to have those numbers Um, you know I think he could do do some positive things but I don't I don't know if he will a lot of quarterbacks choose to train just on on throwing the football uh, leading up to the combine and, and that's fine uh, but it's it, that last game against Georgia really, really made uh, evaluators think about, OK, this is you know, what is his potential? Yeah, I, I think that he's got a really solid floor as an NFL starter. The the ceiling, th- that's going to depend on how creative he can be. And we saw a glimpse of that in the Peach Bowl. So uh, as I've like kind of digested all these things and looking at mock drafts and listening to you and other analysts talk like maybe the the. I don't know if there's a consensus QB one, but perhaps the closest thing we have to that is is Bryce Young. Um, is there a chance for CJ Stroud to to get there? Like, I guess, like how how close is he to that QB one conversation, or is it just a matter of of team preference and and who ends up picking in that spot? Yeah, hundred percent. I think it comes down to preference. I don't think this is like two years ago where it was Trevor Lawrence is one, and then okay, who's going to be two? Is it Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, Justin mm-hmm. Fields? Um, you know, this is this is a wide open, and I think. If Bryce Young were three inches taller and his body his body was a little more filled out, um, I don't think it'd be a question. Bryce Young would be the top quarterback, uh, pretty you know consensus that that he go one. But this he's not. He is a complete outlier size wise. Um, you know, my guess it'll be nice to get an official measurements on him uh, at the combine. My guess is he's five ten and a half, one hundred and ninety four pounds. Um, and it's not just the height, uh, it's it's the build. He doesn't have the frame to comfortably hold 210, 212 pounds. Mm-hmm. That's not how he's built. And so there's durability questions and, and things like that. Not every team is going to be comfortable drafting a complete outlier in the top five of the draft. Now, some teams will, uh, and maybe the team that's picking uh, whoever trades up to one uh, with Chicago or if Chicago stays put, um, you know, Houston there at number two. We we don't. It's hard to say at this point, um, you know, because we're dealing with a complete outlier here with Bryce Young and his size. But I don't think it's a stretch to, to say that a team would prefer CJ Stroud and, and what he's shown to this point. Um, and then you throw in the the ceilings of Will Levis um, and uh, Anthony Richardson and what they could be two three years from now. And I think it's a wide open class. You're going to get different orders uh, from the team, and you know maybe you know that. That 2018 class where we had, you know, Baker Mayfield and Sam Darnold and Josh Allen, um, you know, that Lamar Jackson in that group, that, that was another quarterback group where it was different from team to team. If a different team has a number one overall pick, Josh Allen might have gone number one or Sam Darnold. And I think it'll be very similar with this group. So I don't know if if like Jackson Smith and Jigba is going to Indianapolis. I, I don't know what he's going to do there, if if anything. Yeah. Um, I, I would imagine the hope and the anticipation is that he does some stuff. But I guess what I'm wondering with him is, is his presence there 
a hundred percent about the medical evaluation and almost nothing about what he can do on the field or is like how, how much are people going to be weighing both those things when he's there? I, I mean, hopefully it'd be nice if he works out. Hopefully he does. Hopefully he's, he's able to, um, you know, I, it's hard to say just when he, he, I don't is he even at a hundred percent now? Did he feel a hundred percent at some point in January? Has he had enough time to train and, and get where he wants to be? Um, he might just, you know, wait and, work out of the pro day, or he might pull a, a Drake London. Remember Drake London last year was nursing an injury throughout the pre-draft process. He finally had his workout in uh, almost mid April and didn't it just did positional stuff, chose not to do run a 40, do any testing and uh, just go with his positional stuff. Uh, and he was still the first receiver drafted top 10 overall. So I, I, I w- could we see Smith and Jigba go that route where instead of putting a, a four five three out there in a 40 yard dash, uh, you know, he says, I'm just going to just run my positional stuff and you guys know what type of route runner I am. And that should be enough. But obviously the, the medicals will be huge. That's that's the reason the combine exists. It's not the 40 yard dash. It's not any of these testing numbers. It's the medicals. Uh, and it's a central location for all these players to come to Indianapolis. Uh, there will be, you know, hundreds of MRIs done, um, blood work. I, I mean, everything. They, they, it's really, really um, intensive to get these medicals done. But it's important to understand uh, where these players are. And for a guy like Smith and Jigba, who missed uh, most of the year, to understand where he is physically. And a lot of teams will have their own grading system. Um, for some teams, it's one through five. If you have a one, that means that the doctor said, you know, clean bill of health with no worries about you. If you're at a three, Eh, that's when teams start to worry about it a little bit and different teams have different appetites for risk. Um, and, and that could play a factor. So, you know, I, I and I'm, I'm saying all this just in general terms, because I have no idea um, Jackson Smith, the jig, but where he is uh, health wise. Um, but hopefully the combine will give us more answers. Two more guys I want to ask you about. Uh, the first is Luke Whipler and his decision to come out, I think, surprised a lot of people here in Columbus. I know, I know it surprised me. Yeah. Uh, when you when you assess the season that Luke had, which I thought was very good, and also his where he fits like in this center class, were you surprised that he came out, or did it make more sense to you as someone who looks at it from the draft angle? I was surprised just because I I wasn't blown away by his film. I think he it was it was fine. It was solid. Um, but it wasn't a type of film that says, okay, yeah, this guy needs this this guy needs to go. Like he he's 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 gonna be a high pick. He's gonna be someone that NFL scouts are really excited about. I didn't see that type of film, and the feedback I've gotten from teams is pretty similar. Um, mm. you know, I, I think he's right now kind of viewed as and obviously I don't talk to all 32 teams. I don't know how every single team feels, but just getting a general um thought from the the teams I do talk to, it's you know, an early day three pick. Fourth, fifth round, um, how he works out will play a part in that. Um, you know, I think he's a he's a pretty decent athlete. And that should show up. He's considered a, a pretty smart guy. The interview yeah. should go pretty well. Um, it, I think what also factors in is this isn't a necessarily great center class. Um, I, I think that Joe Tipman from Wisconsin is a really good player. He he should test really well at the combine. Was not surprised he came out. I think he's going to be somewhere on day two. Uh, John uh, Michael Schmitz, same type of deal uh, with him. Um, and, and then, I, so those two guys, I expect to go top 100 and then it's okay. Who's the third guy, you know, could Whipler be that guy? Um, he, he's at least in that conversation. And we know that Ohio state is most likely going to have one first round offensive tackle with Paris Johnson. What do you think the chances are that they end up having two first round offensive tackles? Can, can Dewan Jones rise to that level? Yeah, um, uh, the combine is going to be big for him to see how he um, see how he does with, with some of these drills. Um, obviously, sp- impressed a lot of people at the Senior Bowl in his one day. Um, I, I was uh, disappointed that we couldn't see him the rest of the week because I thought he wasn't really tested on that first practice. Um, you know, you watch the one on ones; everyone is trying to split them down the middle. I, I mean, he's just going to snatch you and bury you at that point. Yeah. You know, you're, you're not really, uh, you know, attacking him in the right way. I thought it, Wednesday's practice, Thursday practice, when Isaiah Foskey and these pass rushers maybe mixed it up a little bit, attacked his inside move, attacked him, attacked him more around the corner. We were going to get a better idea, but unfortunately, Dewan Jones had to pull out. Um, so seeing him at the combine, seeing um, some of the positional drills, I, you know, obviously a guy that size is not going to work out really, really well. It's just make sure he doesn't have an Orlando Brown type of stinker of a, of a combine performance, you know, which obviously put an anchor on Orlando Brown's um, 
uh, draft stock uh, back a couple of years ago, but you know, it's turned out okay for Brown. He's, he's a starting left tackle for uh, uh super bowl champs. Uh, with, but with Dwan Jones, I, Really impressed with him throughout the pro- throughout the season, the way how controlled he got. Uh, you saw a guy that I thought showed a lot more buy-in. You know, it, it, you look into his background and you say, okay, this is a basketball first athlete most of his life. Um, you know, it just everything has been creeping up in terms of the, his development and it the, just the amount of buy-in he showed this year. Um, I, I the combine might not be an opportunity for him to really show what he could do um, or really actuate his strengths. But I still think that he's for a team that's looking for a mauling right tackle. I yeah, a team's going to consider him in the top forty, top thirty-five picks. Maybe he does get in that first round. Certainly possible. Um, it just it won't be for everybody. You know, I, I don't know that he has much positional flex. Um, some teams are going to be, you know, they, they just don't want that type of tackle. But again, for a team that's looking for that mauling right tackle, uh, it, it could line up where he ends up going somewhere in that late first. All right, before we let you go, Dane. Um... Let people know where they can find your work. And and are you doing the, the I'm assuming you're still doing the beast this year, right? I know it's not out yet, but am, am I going to get it? I can't, I can't live without it. No, absolutely. Uh, that'll some, sometime that first week in April uh, is when I shoot for, try to get all the pro day information in there. Um, but yeah, that, that'll be available as long as you have your athletic subscription. It's, it's part of that. And so, um, you know, I, 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 I promise you for anybody that's listening that has not seen uh, the draft guide, the beast, uh, I zero percent chance you'll be disappointed if you're a draft fan. Uh, there's there's more details in that than um, just about anything else. And so uh, hopefully people check that out when it comes out. Um, find all my stuff on the athletic. Uh, that 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 that's where uh, all my work is, and uh, a lot of stuff coming uh, from the combine next week in Indianapolis. Yeah, the uh, the the beast is worth the price of this subscription alone. I, I promise people yeah. that um, I've never been disappointed by that thing, and it is incredible how much information is in there. You're you're a bit of a madman for putting it together, but we appreciate <laughs> appreciate the work you do. We appreciate you giving us some of your time here uh, in the lead up to the NFL Combine and the NFL Draft. We will have uh, continuing coverage of that. So Ohio State players, uh, you know, move up to the NFL here on the podcast and at OhioStateRivals.com. Make sure you stay tuned into that as well. Uh, thanks again to Dane for joining us. I'm Bill. We'll catch you tomorrow on the podcast daily.